Age of Radio. What's going on, everybody? We are back. This is episode 176 of the Dark Windows Podcast. My name is Kevin. And as usual, I'm Kevin. And we are back on our little paranormal road trip this week. We are headed down a little south to Kevin's uh, secondary home state, we'll call it. Sure. Where are we going? Maryland. Yeah, buddy. The Maryland. The land of the Mary. And it's also potentially the weirdest shaped state in the country. Is not. It's it really is. It's an L with a lean. It's more like an upside it's like a lowercase N with a lean. It's an L with a lean. No, it's not. It's shaped like an L. Look at look at a picture of it, dude. It's an L. No. It's an L. Nah. It's also got a terrible map. It's a capital L with a you know, funky thing. So stop. It's not. Hold on. I'll show you some pictures because you don't obviously don't know what it looks like. I do know what it looks like. It looks like an N. It doesn't look like an L, you dink. It's l- whatever. Fucking weird state. Ugly ass map. It's an L with like, it's like, it's. It's it's not it's an L. A split. It's not an L. L's go stand up and they go straight down <laughs> and then over. This is like over right. and then N. It's whatever. an N. It has an it's, ug- it's a fucking amalgamation then. And it has an ugly flag. It looks like some like, some shit that would have been tried for a quebec flag and it just looks terrible it's bad anyway it's also home to six million people and the topography of the state ranges from coastal land uh out in the kind of west on the eastern half of it and uh out to some more mountainous areas on the virginia border up into the uh, appalachians there oh yeah so so some fun facts uh i'm sure you probably know a few of these the Chesapeake Bay is the largest estuary where fresh and salt water mix in the country. Yeah. <laughs> Love the enthusiasm. No. No, you this is true. What else do you want me to say? <laughs> no. I don't know. <laughs> Put some feeling in it. <laughs> Damn. Listen. This is what it would be like to record a podcast with AI where it's like, yes, that is factually correct. Continue. It's like, what you're like, <laughs> yes, you are so correct, Kevin, because. No, I mean, even like, oh, yeah, okay. That would have been great, but I guess I'll just go fuck myself. <laughs> uh, Maryland is also the only state south of the Mason-Dixon line that joined the Union during the Civil War. because It's not south of it. It's, it splits. It's a split state. But it's the only one that's partially south of it that joined. Yes. It's also because they wanted to be on the right side of history, I think. Maybe. They're like, you know, Jefferson Davis is kind of a twat, so... This is, this is basically the reason for brother fighting brother. Right. Because of, like, Maryland being a split state. You know, that and the other one that everybody fucking forgets about, Kansas. Bloody Kansas. Oh, my God. That was a nightmare. We, that that could be its own episode there. Yeah. You know, um, speaking of the Civil War, the bloodiest battle of the Civil War was fought in Antietam, which mm-hmm. is in Maryland. Um, again, eventually we're just going to be like, hey, fuck it. After we're done with the road trip, Civil War battles. <laughs> Fun. I'd be I'd be down with that. Yeah. Or even like Dan Carlin doing like a five parter on the uh, on the American Civil War, oh, be so happy, like twenty five hours of just listening to him talk about it and read letters of fucking people writing home. Listen, oh. he, I'm telling you, uh, you can't do it as well as you know Ken. Burns. I will fucking fight you, Ken Burns. Ken Burns can Did suck it. it. Dan Carlin would do fantastic. Just saying, he'd be repeating Did, everything Dan Kearns, Dan Kearns are, Burns already said. Yes. Ken Burns? Yes. Did you just have a Whatever. fucking stroke? <laughs> I might have. Holy jeez. Okay. Wow. The first successful passenger balloon flight took place in Baltimore, uh, June 24th of 1784. And it immediately blew up. No, it didn't. No, that was the one in New Jersey. <laughs> but that's also because it was in New Jersey. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> and that thing's like, oh, man. I Boom. It's like, I've got to land in New Jersey. Ugh. Yeah. I'll just kill myself instead. And guess what? 
committed blimpicide. It's also the narrowest state in the country. Um, at one point in time, it is only two miles wide in the area of Hancock. So it kind of goes into that whole weird shape thing. So it wouldn't be our paranormal road trip without talking about some goofy ass laws that they have in their state too. Goofy ass laws. Oh yeah. In Cumberland, you can't keep chickens in your hotel room. And I, every once in a while I run across one of these and I go, you know, they didn't just make that law up. Something had to happen. Was there a guy like the only thing I can really think of is this guy is running a chicken prostitution ring out of a cheap hotel. <laughs> no. And I don't like it. <laughs> I think it was uh, it was during that cold, cold ass winter. And, he, you know, he held his you know, chicken. Oh, room. you mean in like 1630 before they had hotels? Yeah. Well. <laughs> the, the the door of 3C opens. Hey, you want some eggs? Well, they had they had uh <laughs> they had inns that were basically hotels. Yeah, but they don't have these laws from back then don't still don't still you it, never know. <sighs> but it's, it clearly says hotels, not inns. Whatever. They just changed the words. You can't play professional croquet before 2 p.m. on Sundays in Baltimore. Well, that just makes sense. If you watch The Wire, you are allowed to sell cocaine any time in Baltimore, apparently. That's though. not croquet, though. That's cocaine. Crocaine. Cro- oh. That's... Just ripping lines off your fucking huh. whatever the fuck it is. Mallet, I guess. Yes. Is it a I mallet mean, or is it a club? <sighs> it's a it, mallet. It's not a golf club. No, it's a mallet. It must be a mallet. It is a mallet. That's a stupid fucking game, too. It's fun, but it's just, it's silly. Play mini golf. Be an adult. (laughs) Also in Baltimore, you can get in trouble for mistreating oysters. (laughs) Open a can of oysters. Punk bitch! Fuck are you gonna do? Start slapping it? Listen, the Chesapeake is, you know, the, the Oyster Bay. I, something like that. That's what it stands for. I don't know. Oyster Bay sounds like a really, really, like, cheap cracker company. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even though oyster crackers are really good. Eh, I mean. Oh, dude, listen. Oyster crackers and a bowl of milk. Ugh. Fucking lights Ugh. out. Fuck you. It's welfare cereal, and I love it. I don't care. That's Fuck gross. off. I eat saltine crackers and milk, dude. Ugh. Oh, piece of shit. Get out of here. <laughs> You can get arrested in Rockville because it's illegal to swear on the highway. Pretty sure anybody that lives... It's kind of hard. Anybody that listens to this show would be like, yeah, I'll save you a cell. They, they just pile us together. There'd be like 15, 20 of us in the thing. I mean, that's just hard because, I mean, go to D.C., you know, on outskirts of D.C., you're going to swear like a motherfucker. Dude, I swear on dirt roads. <laughs> Fetch on the fucking highway. Um, also, my brother would potentially be arrested in Baltimore because it's illegal to wear a sleeveless shirt in public parks. So, sorry, Jeff. <sighs> yeah. You have to pu- put a flannel on in the summer or something. Cause, uh, no sleeveless shirts or in a dipper, probably, too. Uh, between the two of us, I don't think he owns a shirt with fucking sleeves on it other than flannels. Like, I don't think he owns a t-shirt with sleeves on it. Oh, he does. For a short time, and then the sleeves come off of them. Well, well once he gets home, this you know. Right. He, he immediately is like... Oh my god! And like he's got it done to a science. I've seen him take the sleeves off of a shirt while he's wearing it. That's impressive. Hey, you got man's got to do what a man's got to do. It's that disgusting hillbilly DNA we have. It's It's like something. I can't have my can't have my shoulders and sleeves. Fuck that. Just pop them off and back out the whatever the fuck he does. I don't know. I know. How about some famous folks from Maryland? I almost said Baltimore because that's fucking where all of them are from. Because nobody was ever born anywhere in Maryland other than Baltimore, apparently. Mike Rowe of Dirty Jobs grew up in Baltimore. And he also sang in the uh, Baltimore Opera, believe it or not. Hmm. But he has a really good voice, though. I could, I could picture that. I don't know about that. Listening to him narrate, like, uh, Deadliest Catch, he, you'd be like, okay, well, that's, he that's could a, sing. Well, that's a talking voice, not a singing voice. But if you have a good talking voice, you're generally going to have a good singing voice. Okay, sure. Or if you have a voice like either one of us, they're going to be like, if you sing... You'll blind us all, because it's terrible. And it's not wrong. You're probably right. The fastest human being in water, Michael Phelps, was born in Baltimore. <laughs> He's part dolphin. He, he is. <laughs> it's like if Peyton Manning fucked a dolphin, Michael Phelps came out of it. 
He's got a giant forehead. He look. He, yeah. I I can't disagree he, with that. Exactly. He, he's a strange looking dude. I mean, but he can smoke weed like a motherfucker. Well, his his mom was mermaid has to be or something. I don't know. The lungs on that dude. Yeah. Holy shit. The man responsible for creating more vegetarians than anyone else, Upton Sinclair, was born in Baltimore. Great book. It was uh, The Jungle, right? Yep. Yeah. That book's also the reason the FDA exists. It is. And the FDA is also the same organization that says that you're allowed to have a certain part per million of, of insects in your food, and it's still okay to eat. So. Yeah, I mean. Insects. It goes for, like, rodent droppings and shit like that, too. Yeah. It's pretty gnarly, but... I mean, it's better than, you know, your food just being, you know, on the floor, and then they just, you know, pick it back up like they used to, and, you know, hey. Uh, Listen, you're going to tell me you've never dropped a piece of raw meat on the floor, picked it up and gone, eh, washed it off and cooked it anyway? Okay, there's a difference between, like, (laughs) dropping it momentarily and then picking it back up, and then there's what happened in his book where it was had been on the fucking floor for a long time. Right. Then they took and swept most of the stuff back up and then just threw it back in. And they made hot dogs. Yeah. It's all lips, eyeballs, and assholes. That's what hot dogs are. And I love them. They're great, yes. I mean, I mean a little bit of snap. You gotta have natural casing, though, just... Oh, perfect. <laughs> I love natural casing hot dogs. Uh-huh. The only other ones that are really good are you get, like, the Oscar Mayer cheddar dogs. Ooh. I'll eat them fucking things raw. Oh, yeah. Those the, are good. The greatest Charlotte Hornets player of all time, Tyrone Muggsy Bogues, was also born in Baltimore. So says you. Who, who, who would you put him up against for that position? There's, well, I mean, there's Larry, uh, Larry Johnson. Yeah. Okay. He was good. Uh, also a criminal. So? He, like, did some really weird shit. But Muggsy Bogues was fucking awesome. I mean, and he seems like he's Alfonso such a nice dude. Ellis was good. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, but they're also like built like basketball players, and Muggsy Bogues is built like a normal person. Where he's like five foot six. So? He's not fucking nine feet tall like everybody else on the court. He was a point guard. You I know. Have to be dude, extremely most point tall. guards are even like six three. Now? Yeah. Back, back how many fucking five foot seven guys yeah. were in the NBA back then? Spud Webb. And Muggsy Bogues. That's two out of... Uh, There's probably more. Not fucking playing. I mean, they were probably you can't count a little the, bit taller. And you can't count the dudes that are going out there with the fucking chamois and stuff when some guy falls down. That's yeah, they're true. like 5'8". Who gives a shit? They're not playing basketball. Okay. All right. Fine. <laughs> That's some white kid in high school. <laughs> <laughs> the Colossus of Clout. The Sultan of Swat. The Great Bambino. Who? Babe Ruth. Who is she? George Herman Ruth. Never heard of her. <laughs> Never heard of her. The Bambi. You're fucking oh. killing me, Smalls. Also known as the best goddamn hitter in baseball history. And potentially the biggest mistake the Red Sox ever made. Yeah. He uh, he grew up in a, uh, a Baltimore orphanage rolling cigars. Yeah. For uh, Working for a local cigar company. And from what I've been, what I heard, saw, whatever... Don't know if it's totally true. What you seen? I seen on the Facebooks for our area, the city that he actually possibly played up here, baseball. Who would be surprised? Like a like a minor league team type thing because they used to have like a lot of them. Oh yeah, there's shitloads like of minor league teams. Farm system type thing. Yeah. The Iron Man, nineteen time All Star, World Series champion. Owner of 2,632 consecutive games played and probably the second best player to ever put on cleats and step onto the field for the Baltimore Orioles, Cal Ripken Jr. was born in Haver de Grace, Maryland. Yeah. Before you ask, Brooks Robinson's the first. I can see you're starting to think like, who? Brooks Robinson. You going to argue with me on that one? Who else? Miguel Tejada, he can go fuck himself. No. <laughs> no. Vladimir Guerrero at the end of his career, as much as I love him, way better with the Angels. No. No. Yeah, exactly. He was. I think he was way better with the Expos. But... Yeah, but he was also like 20 when he played for the Expos. So? And he was still hitting fucking bombs off his shoelaces. 
Yeah. Like he did in Anaheim. Yeah. Well, so. he was hitting them. He started off hitting them there in in you know Expo Land. Yeah, but he got better in Anaheim. Yeah. Okay. That's true. I agree. You, you put you put him on a, on a he better. He got fatter. Hey, listen. He could he could have weighed three hundred pounds and he still had fucking bat speed. He's like Gary <laughs> Sheffield. I know. Like I just saw a video of Gary Sheffield a couple days ago on Facebook. He's like fifty six years old. And he's got one of his kids throwing a batting practice. He's standing like smoking a fucking cigar, and he's just still smashing home runs. Yeah. Like, not even taking the stogie out of his mouth, just cracking home runs. It's like, God damn. He's always had a fucking great bat. And his hair went silver, and he looks great. And you're like, God damn, dude. He's a silver fox now? Yeah, he's like salt and pepper. It's like, oh, fuck, dude, he looks great. He damn. looks like he's still in good shape. Huh. He still looks like skinny Ray Lewis. Skinnier Ray Lewis. Yeah. Uh, not as muscular Ray Lewis. Uh, Ray Lewis looks like him. Same difference. <laughs> I'm not saying that because they're black. I'm saying that because they're athletes. I'm, kidding. I'm saying it because they look similar in the face. Uh, also, Harriet Tubman, you know, whoever that is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Conductor of the Underground Railroad. She yeah, was... she's, she conducted all the railroads. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, don't go that way. Go that way. <laughs> Get in the fucking basement, y'all. Uh, she was born into slavery in Maryland. It's not real specific as to where, because uh, when you don't technically count them as people, you don't tend to keep track of where they're born. Well, no. Which is kind of fucked up. Well, <laughs> sort of they did. You know. They did, because they, they didn't should... have birth certificates and shit, though. Well, no, they were like livestock. No. Wow. <laughs> this, no, but that's I know, the truth. It's, it's true, but it's just like, fuck, you hear it out loud, and you're like, oh, man, that's gross. I know, but it's the truth, though. You know, when they would they, they would sell them, they were yeah. like, you know, strip them butt naked, like, oh, look it's at not this like fine they, book. You not know? like they had a stamp on the bottom of their foot, like, made in Maryland. Bap. <laughs> <laughs> like, you take your phone case off, and like, oh, Taiwan, cool, I know where this came from. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah, they used to just fucking no. carve it into the sole of one of their feet. No. Like, <laughs> like Toy Story. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, balls. Made in China. Yeah. Now, yeah. most likely made on a plantation. <laughs> <laughs> right here in the good old U.S. of A., where we used to own people. But, you know, we're not the only ones that did it, so I don't know why we give ourselves such a fucking hard time about it. I mean... Everybody else did. There's people that still just, own people. We just so. follow the trend. That's yeah. all we did. We were we were, we were uh, not trendsetters. We were just follow the leaders. But we also stopped, which is a good thing. Well, because, we had to fight a war to stop. Yeah, but there's also places in the world where people still own other people. And it's fucked up, but... Also, uh, if you're a Jonathan Mayberry fan, Joe Ledger, born and raised in Baltimore, highly recommend reading... No, you know what? Scratch that. Get a fucking Audible subscription and listen to the Joe Ledger series. Because you can read the books, and they're great. Yeah. Where you can listen to the books, and they're even better. Yeah, because Ray Porter is fucking awesome. Yeah, I mean, no, you can't even sound like Ray Porter. I mean, no. you know, in your head. No, well, you, you can if, try. You pick, you pick up one of those books, and you start reading it, and you will hear the characters' voices in his voice. Well, in your you head, and it's, listen, it's crazy. You have to have heard him, right, to hear the, his voice, right. You know, and to do that many different characters, and they all have distinct, different voices. Jesus, this man's fantastic. He is, he is the man, the myth, the legend. But he wouldn't be able to do it without Jonathan Mayberry, who's a fucking amazing author. Exactly. He's, I don't think, I've read a bunch of his stuff, and I don't think I've read, a, uh, read or listened to any of it that I didn't like, to no. be honest with you. No. Um, so, uh, why don't another, you... Uh, hold on, hold oh, on. Oh, shit, you got more famous folk? No, there's another famous person that, you know, that lived in Maryland. Oh, yeah? Way back when. I mean, he wasn't born in Maryland, I don't think. Who? Maybe he was, I don't know. Oh, uh, Mr. Mud, who famously set John Wilkes Booth's leg. Yeah. Well, foot, whatever, because he broke it. Ankle, Ankle, whatever. Whatever. Lower extremity. Yeah. Also, I can hear you in your car or office going, but what about Ed Ground Poe? He was born in Massachusetts, so suck it. Listen, I wasn't saying that. No, I was I was talking to these people. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I love you guys, but, you know. He was talking to you yeah, people. I love you guys, but Edgar Allan Poe's from Massachusetts, so. Well. Just because they named a football team after you know one what? of his stories. I hope people actually come back and go, listen, we weren't thinking that. But you were. You were. Because you think Maryland, you think Baltimore, and you go, yeah, Edgar Allan Poe. And you think about authors and shit? Yeah. Because he's like the only one that ever really lived there that did anything. But I don't think of that. 
I'm weird. I know. You're also full of shit. Anyway, what do you uh, what do you <laughs> got this not week? Full of shit. Three quarters full. All right, fine. So, right, what's so, your first one? As I know you have multiple because I have multiple. You live there. Yes. Well, they didn't really live there. Yeah, I just you, lived no, there. You, you basically vacation did, there every summer. So all these uh, that I have done are from places that I've actually been to in Maryland um, because they were really close to where my family lives. Uh, the, so the first one I'm going to cover is uh, Mal Dyer. I know who that is. Uh, she and her two brothers actually had come came to um, the U.S. in the late 17th century. And they actually settled. Uh, she settled in uh, Leonard Town, which known at the, was known at the time as Seymour Town, um, Maryland, and was which is a peaceful uh, situated. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm that again. In the 17th century, moved to Leonard Town, which at the time was known as Seymour Town, uh, and it was a peaceful colony situated on Breton Bay, a hamlet, I dare say, maybe. Possibly. Not the play, but like, you know. Yeah. A little village on a hill or some shit. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever the fucking Hamlet is. It's not on a hill. <laughs> or Hamilton. Or whatever. Would have been hamburger. I don't fucking know. Not anyway. a hamburger either. Um, so the colonialists farmed mostly tobacco and corn, but they also tended to their livestock. Uh, that is all but for one lonely inhabitant, and her name... Like I said, was Ball Dyer. She was at this point when she moved there an older woman. Mm-hmm. I know where this is going. Uh, she was tall and thin, and she lived alone in a modest little college. Uh, college. She lived in a modest little college <laughs> on the outskirts of town. Actually, that's one of the only parts of Maryland I've been to is College Park. <laughs> yes. Yep. Um. She lived in a modest little call. Yeah, Jesus Christ! I will say it again. You, you know, you did say it again. I did. Now hold on here. So let let's just keep track. Old lady lives by herself in the woods. She's a witch. In a modest college, she's a witch. Well, in a modest college, I mean, if you're in a modest college, I mean, you're definitely a witch. So it's like, is that a community college or is that a state university? <laughs> well, I think at this point it's a community it's a, it's college. It's a state college. You know, no, it's a community. Like you can go there after work and you know pick up some classes and shit. <laughs> well, true. get your bachelor's degree. I mean, and... she 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 goes from she works from home, yeah. so you know, so she can do whatever she wants. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to figure. I think she may be going for like uh maybe like computer sciences, some shit that everybody goes to fucking community college possibly. For, you know, well she didn't go. She didn't live in a community college or a, a modest college. She lived off campus. <laughs> yes, <laughs> she lived in a in a modest cottage. Off campus. Yes. Uh, in the woods, a mile or so from Letter Town. Now, uh, no one at that point knew much about her at all. Other than that she's but, a witch. Well, I mean, there were rumors. That's pretty clear that, at this point that she's know, a witch. Kinda, well, there's rumors that kind of spread through. and you yeah. know, No, you know, how things go. Woman living alone. She's either a whore <laughs> or she's a witch. Why not both? A whore witch? Witch whore. Oh. Well, I said whore witch. I mean, what's the difference? It's a supernatural slut. (laughs) (laughs) Well, well, true. I just punched my phone off the desk as well. Because I'm mad. That, because she's a supernatural witch? Because I wasn't there to get none. Oh, well, it's okay. Uh, So, uh, it was said that Maul, uh, when she was younger, was a beautiful woman. With long red hair, um, and still tall. Well, she was had been happily married, and had a handsome fellow for a husband, and had a couple of boys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then this all came tumbling. Tragedy down. struck. Yes. As fucking normal. Yeah. Uh-huh. Huh. Uh, her boys and her husband were, you know. Traveling on home on an Irish back road, and well, they died. They got in an accident. Okay, so their their their, uh, their wagon tipped over, and you know the horses, you know, trampled them or something. I don't know. So, a th- these are just the options because this is the only way that people have ever died in Ireland. They were killed by potatoes. I told you. 
B, ambushed by leprechauns. Or C, they tried to run a British roadblock and somebody uh, fucking smoked them with an SA-80. British paratroopers. Okay, first off, A, no British paratroopers in the 16th, 17th century. How do you know? Because I'm pretty sure the British were in Ireland. But they were no paratroopers because there was no planes. They can jump off cliffs. <laughs> Everybody knows they can fly. Those limey no. fucks. <laughs> no. 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 Not, no, not so much. So it was either leprechauns or potatoes, but that that portion of it has been lost to history. Uh, yes. Possibly, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm leaning towards leprechauns, but that's, you know. Probably. That's my yeah. my thoughts. Most likely. Either that or he was fucking drunk and he rolled the wagon and they got run over by the, the, the wheels. Also likely. Yeah. You know. Because if, if there's one thing the Irish are not known for, it's their sobriety. True. <laughs> well, Maul had, before she found out that her husband and sons had died, she had feelings of uneasiness. And she... she that, you know, some, something had happened. But she kind of, like, brushed those feelings aside and didn't really, you know, think about it until she was told that there was an accident. And the feelings came back when she saw her lifeless, saw the lifeless bodies of her husband and sons. Yeah. Uh, and from that point, Maul... Remained in, like, her grief was inconsolable. Inconceivably inconsolable. Yes. Uh, that was harder to say than I realized it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. so, well, it was so, she was so, so inconsolable that it bore a hole in her heart and sh- that she could never, ever recover from. <laughs> She's never going to dance again. She's lost that love and feeling. Yeah. It's gone. Well, gone, she might dance gone. again if she's a witch, like naked in the woods or some shit. Because they they but she's tend to a, do that. I don't. She's a witch. No. Come on. No. All the fucking evidence is there. She's just lost that love and feeling. She's got a familiar. She lives by herself. She's an old hag. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. She lost that love and feeling. She now needs Goose and Maverick to sing to her, to tell her that she's lost that love and feeling. Where the fuck are we going with that? I don't know. Was that? I, th- I don't think that song was in Top Gun, was it? It was too. Was it? They both sang it. Oh, okay. I Top Gun. I automatically go to Kenny Loggins because that is the fucking Danger top, Zone top tier song in that that no, entire movie. No, I, mean, I mean, you can't, you cannot beat Danger Zone. I think she, honestly, Kenny Loggins has done a lot of really good shit, and you can't beat any of listen, it. Listen, Goose. I think she's lost that I'm gonna, feeling. You stop saying that, Jesus. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> well. <laughs> As you record this through an old barn door that you're uh, sitting on, apparently. You're right. <laughs> so, well, every this this loss of love and, you know, heartache. Don't say it again. <laughs> love and heartache? <laughs> heartache and love? No, fuck. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was so bad that. She went so far as everything that she saw in her home reminded her of her husband and boys. Eh, understandable. So she couldn't bear it anymore, and she boarded a ship from Maryland on October of 1677 and promised herself that she will never love again as I'm, deep. I'm going to find some dick, but I'm not falling in love with it. Exactly. <laughs> I will get strange. Yeah. But I will not ever say I love you. Just getting fucking hammered out by some weird stranger with a I, in a hat with a buckle on it. She's like, they're like, oh man, I love you. Get, go, just go. Shoo. Here's your boots. Get the fuck leave out. Leave my leave the herbs on the counter. Yeah, leave the you money. Son of a bitch. Whatever. I don't give a shit. Yeah. But, well, uh, so this is where she decided to be alone for the rest of her life. And remain a lot recluse and not conform to any of the norms of society. She became a goth kid in the 90s. She did. Yep. Yeah, man. Banging her head. Smoking cigarettes in her dark room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Writing poetry and listening to The Cure and shit. Yep. We've, hey. we've all been there. First off, A, there's nothing wrong with The Cure. Yeah. Whatever. Shut eh. up. 
Wasn't my thing. It wasn't your thing, but it was mine. I Fucking a, when? <laughs> I, I liked The Cure. And I was, but I wasn't a goth kid either. Do you ever just say shit and think that you're making it up? Because I think you might be. <laughs> Name three songs. That's that's like that's the defense. <laughs> I love that band. Name three songs. You're wearing their shirt. Name three songs. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I don't. Fuck. I don't even top of my head. I don't. Even... Money for nothing. Short people. What? And that other Huey Lewis song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Cure covered all of those. Yeah, I think you just made up one of them. Or Flock of Seagulls. That was the other song they did. That shitty band from the 80s. What? Yep. The, the Flock of Seagulls? Yeah. Was a, was a band from the you know the 80s, yes. Yeah, they were terrible. They weren't. They were pretty good. Come on. <sighs> they were really bad, dude. Well, there were. was so much better music in the 80s. No, there really wasn't. There really was, dude. Like, Guns N' Roses existed. Okay, first off, A, Guns N' Roses, like, was at the very fucking tail end of the That's 80s. Fine. In the 90s. That's fine. Okay, so, and B, I listened to more of 80s music than you did. D- I hated I wasn't it. born until, like, 87. I exactly. had no interest in music in the 80s. Exactly. And you were a child, so you had shit taste in music. I listened to everything that my parents listened to. And fucking the local radio station, which I absolutely fucking hated. Yeah. Yeah. Still do. That's why I don't listen to the radio anymore. Exactly. Anyway. So, with her promise not to love again and not to conform to anything, you know, Strange dick and all that. Yeah, everything. uh, She was perfectly content to be, you know, to live this life. And her behavior only became suspect when... Stories about her little strangeness type, you know, behaviors uh, became more than just the odd woman living alone in the woods. Citizens Strange surmised... women living in the woods distributing swords. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, fuck. Just when you thought we weren't going to make a Monty Python reference. Uh, citizens surmised Mal Dyer must be a witch. Yet, the colonists lived a cautious coexistence with her. They bartered her with her for elixirs to leave ailments in exchange for herbs and sustenance. Sounds like a lady we talked about on our Louisiana episode, Julia Brown. Yeah. Except this uh, is a forest witch, not a swamp witch. Exactly. They're, I think they're specced the same. They're just different. Yes. Yeah. Just little tiny difference. Yeah. Little differences. It's like the difference between a you know a mountain troll and a forest troll. <laughs> mm-hmm. Same fucking thing, just mm-hmm. a little different. One has more power than the other. I don't know. Mountain troll. I figured one power. would probably smell worse than the other. True. You know, true, true. Like swamp shit. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Damp. So on a rare occasion, she would actually go into town, and most would just kind of you know keep away from her and let her do her thing. Because they kind of didn't want to f- have any repercussions from, you know, pissing her off. Here comes that weird bitch if again. If she happens to be a witch. <laughs> well, then comes along the winter of 1697-98, when North America entered what was to re- referred to as later, later on as a mini mi- uh, mice age. Yeah, mini mice age. Yeah. Which, I mean, is this, is that the it's same a, thing as a regular mice age? <laughs> well, true. Because they're already small. I mean, well. Or is it a baby mice age? It's it's a baby mice age. So it's like pink and shit. Yeah. Ugh. Well, that's not a mice age. It's an ice age. Yes. That's so a mini word. ice age. Uh, meteorologists didn't exist at the time in the 17th century. So colonists basically just were like, yeah, we're just going to call it the longest winter we ever have known. Now, is that like pre-Farmer's Almanac, too? Yeah. Because that shit was like, that's usually pretty accurate yeah. for some reason. Way before that. Yeah. Uh, things were so bad that Foos... Foo, uh, Foos. Foos. <laughs> yes. Foos Roda. Uh, food was scarce, causing famine and death. Livestock was also dying from b- the below freezing temperatures. And the uh, kick in the real nuts was finally... A flu epidemic broke out. As it does. In Leonard Town, causing deaths to to double that winter. Hmm. 
Uh, they should have socially distanced and been vaccinated and worn masks. Exactly. Probably still would have died, though. Probably. You know. Uh, there seemed to be no end to the extreme winter, nor was there a suitable explanation for the cold and suffering, unless, well, you consider a supernatural f- cause that the witch out in the woods did it. Ice witch. Yes. Coming this fall <coughs> to Ooh. Fox. I was, think, I was thinking WB, but maybe Does not. WB still exist, or is it CW now? I don't know. I don't know. UPN. We'll go with that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, on uh, the coldest night of the year in February, the men of Leonardtown were all huddled together at the county alms house drinking and bullshitting and, you know, just getting drunk. You know, just being complete assholes, probably. Yeah, I would, I would guess so. You know? And... Well, they were just, you know, talking about how so many were dead in their town and children were dying while Mull Dyer was surviving, you know, away from the town in her little cottage all by herself. Well, I mean, you don't get the flu if you don't go near other people. Exactly. Well, this kind of pissed them off and one of the people, you know, jumps, one of the guys jumps up and says, you know, her witchcraft saves her. And another one, you know, they were like all like, yeah, 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 rubble, rubble, rubble. You yeah. know, that kind of thing. And all agreeing because they're all drunk and they're like, you know, whatever, sounds great. So stewing over these thoughts of, you know, of just death and. Want this bitch dead. Yeah, want yeah. her dead. One of them stands up and. Now, just proclaims, we shall burn the witch before she kills the rest of us. Well, the problem is, the BTUs on a burning witch are not good enough to keep you warm for that long. Uh, you have to have a couple of them. Probably. You know. Yeah. And then there's the smell. Uh, but I'm, I'm more, I'm more effect, I'm more concerned with the, uh, you know, like the energy star rating of burning a witch. So, uh, the men hooted and hollered and... Took a last swig of beer or whatever the hell they were drinking, grabbed torches and lanterns and stormed out into the bitter cold. The woods was dark and the snow was deep. The march was arduous, but the men persevered to their purpose. Yeah. Which was to harass the fuck out of Mile Dyer. Maybe kill her. They got to their cottage. I already said they wanted to kill her, so. Yes. And they were, you know, being all piss ash drunk, they started yelling. You know, profanities at her. Well, at the cottage, at least. <laughs> trying to wake her up. Fuck you, house! Yeah. <laughs> you son of a bitch, take that! Fuck you, you fucking... I hate your shutters, you motherfucker! Yeah, <laughs> your shutters are fucking whack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of, what kind of doorbell is this, douchebag? Fuck you. Who has white fucking shutters, huh? Yeah. <laughs> After Labor Day? Assholes. That's who. <laughs> well, with all this yelling and screaming about, you know... That her, them calling her a witch and everything. She awoke. And fearing, you know, that they might try to come in after her, she kind of, like, laid still in the bed, fearing, you know, thinking maybe they might go away. You know. Silently racks her Glock under the sheets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> come on in. Come in, motherfucker. I dare you. I got a red dot in NVGs. I'll fucking <laughs> slot you right here. <laughs> I'll show you who's a fucking witch, motherfucker. You know, well, forest witch going dark. <laughs> forest witch, come in. Forest witch, come in. You imagine in. a fucking witch with with fucking NVGs on her broom? That'd be crazy. You just hear, you know, you just hear. That looks like some that looks like some shit out of Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you pan the, the the screen pans over and you see like a little earbud. You know, you just hear forest witch, come in. Forest witch, come in. And you just like. Oh, no. Standing right next to the door, very, very, very quietly screwing on a suppressor. And then, and then back wherever, you know, back somewhere else, you hear just hear, Forest Witch has gone dark. How did we just turn this old woman into John Wick? That's fucking nuts. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well. Oh, shit. There's another witch out on the fucking hill with a, a 308 just picking these dickheads off as they're coming up through the snow. <laughs> True. <laughs> Bake down. Make one move, motherfucker. Do it. Throw Why'd you back. shoot him in the legs? 
because then they come back for him and I get to shoot more of them. <laughs> it's an old the, Vietnam trick, which hasn't happened yet. <laughs> throw, th- throw that torch, I dare you. Just throw it. Fucking shoots his hand and just drops it. <laughs> oh! House sets on. That's how the set house set on fire. Accidental, yeah. Yep. Friendly fire. Yep. It was fucking turned on for this one. Son of well, a bitch. Yes, the house does set on fire because they start throwing the torches at the windows and everything else. And I gotta walk home in the dark. Well, she fears for her life, and she, with her dog, jump out the back window and break off into the woods and just keep running. Probably a good idea. The men, being piss-ass drunk, probably didn't recognize that she was gone, you know, out the back window and didn't want to chase her, so they said, to hell with it, you know, we'll just let her go. And she kept going. Well, some days later... A little boy was in the woods searching for his lost livestock. Oh, and no. And he came across an object sticking out of the snow. Curious, he approached it and came to face with other than Sabu. No. <laughs> she, she looks like that fucking ice wizard from the old Rudolph, the old uh, uh, Santa Claus claymation thing. <laughs> yeah. Except when she thaws, she's not a normal person. It's a rotting corpse, no. which is less Christmassy, I guess. I. Uh, he sees that, you know, she has a hand pressed a, on a rock, and one of her hands is raised up into the sky as if to kind of like she's saying a prayer or something, or, or a curse, I don't know, whichever it was. But this kind of became unsettling to the rest of the the town. Well, you found a frozen corpse. Yeah, it's kind of disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> and to this day, people claim to see a woman uh, in white because that's what she was wearing. Uh, obviously that haunts the area and accidents occur on a road that's named after her late at night when a they see a like a white dog jump from one side of the road out of the woods into the middle of the road and then back to uh, off the road into the other side of the woods okay um people crash pro tip if you see a white dog on that road just, just keep fucking running. hit it yeah I'm not going to advocate running over a dog because it would make me sad if someone did that to uh, mine. But. Um, there's also descendants of the of the townsfolk that even claim that that uh, that she actually left a curse on them, and it still stands to this day. I wouldn't be surprised. Now, in 17, no, 17, 1972, uh, an 875-pound boulder was removed from a wooden ravine near the road named after her Mm -hmm. in letter town. And it was placed at the courthouse lawn in front of the old 1876 jailhouse, which, uh, you know, serves now. Well, as the, uh, historical society. And then in early, uh, at that, well, at that point it was, but then in early 2021. So this year, the Historical Society relocated the, relocated the rock to the grounds of Tudor Hall, where the Historical Society has its headquarters. So that is Maul Dyer. She's also the basis for the story of the Blair Witch, because mm. that was all right in that area, too. Um, let's see. So my next one... Yeah, hit it. Um, ...is uh, another place that's just, like, maybe, I don't know... 10, 15 minutes away from where my family lives. It's called Point Lookout. Um, it's uh, like a little peninsula. And I always thought that, well, because it has a lighthouse, and it was, you know, by the Chesapeake Bay, or close to where the Patuxent reaches into the uh, Chesapeake, was that, you know, hey, it's just a you know, place for, you know, lighthouse and, you know, ships so they don't crash. That's, yeah, that's, well, yeah, that's sense. not the case. Ah. It was more. Uh, in 1862, Quartermaster General uh, Miggs ordered Brigadier General uh, Daniel H. Rucker, Chief Quartermaster, to establish a prison camp at Point Lookout, which would hold 10,000 prisoners, which was not the case. It held a lot more. We'll soon find out how many more. Okay. Uh, Point Lookout was the largest and one of the worst Union prisoner of war camps established 
uh, during this time, which, okay. and it was established on August 1st of 1863. So this was a place where Union soldiers were kept or Confederate soldiers? Confederates. Okay, okay. Prisoner okay. of war. Well, no, you said Union... Union, uh, Union it, was uh, a, it was one of the worst Union prisoner of war camps. Right, and I didn't mean, I didn't know if that meant that's somewhere where Union soldiers were kept or... No, it was one okay. of our, okay. the Unions. Well, so we kept our, the, ba- the, the bad guys were there, quote-unquote. Yeah, well, sure. no, not really quote-unquote. Yes. Um... So it was located at the extreme tip of St. Mary's County on the low, uh, long, low, barren peninsula where, the, as I had said previous, the Potomac and Chesapeake Bays, you know, are merged. Um, all prisoners lived in overcrowded tents and shacks with no barracks to protect them from heat and coastal storms. No air conditioning. Nope. No, none of that shit. Ridiculous. Uh, there was several different kinds of tents that the prisoners used. Uh, each row of tents were labeled as a division and would hold 1,000 or more prisoners. Jesus. The majority of the tents differed by type. So here's the types. There's an A tent, which held five men. A Silby tent, which held 13 to 14 men. Then there were hospital tents that held 15 to 18 uh, wall tents, which held three to eight. Uh, shelter tents, which held three men. Pup and tents that held one man. There were wall tent flies, which held three to eight men. And then, oh, I, I forgot one. Also, uh, hospital flies, which held 10 to 13 men. And cluster flies everywhere. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that many people, there's going to be flies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the back of the prison was right next to the bay. Okay. So no you know, basically, there. escape if you will. You know, fuck you, yeah, because you probably die. Yeah. I mean, you know. Unless you're a good swimmer. Yeah. Which you'll still probably drown. So fuck you. Yeah. So uh, here, the prisoners were were allowed a certain area to bathe, wash clothes, and find additional food. Such as clams, lobsters, fish, and probably crabs as well, because oh. Maryland is known for crabs. Also, that many people in one space, there's going to be crabs. Exactly. Crotch crickets. Probably. <laughs> well, maybe. Uh, it's body lice. Yeah. It just depends on where they live. <laughs> yeah. uh, fresh water for drinking was very scarce, and it was polluted. Uh, well supplied, Wells supplied the water for the camp, but... They provided, approved too shallow and had iron and alkali salts in it because, well, hey, it's fucking salt water. Yeah, it tends to happen. You know, down that far, it's salt water. It's not yeah. uh, brackish or anything. Yeah. Well, nowadays, it's more brackish <laughs> because the Potomac is a lot more, or uh, Patuxent is a lot more brackish water. Okay. Um. So, now, later on, a boat would be arranged to actually deliver fresh water for the prisoners, you know, because after finding out that, hey, you know. This is probably also before they realized you can boil water and then drink it, too, but. Well, I mean, they wouldn't want to give them that. No, fucking, they're prisoners. Who gives a shit? Now, there was never enough food or firewood. Both were, and both were strictly rationed. <laughs> yeah. Rats were a major source of protein for some inmates, <laughs> and catching them became a favorite sport in camp. Rations were uh, supposed to be consist of pork two out of three days, Ugh. with beef the third day. And nothing the other four, except fucking rats and water bugs that you, you can find. You got it. Uh, rations were served twice a day. The first time was uh, between the hours of 8 and 9 a.m., for breakfast, and then between 3 and 4 p.m. for dinner. Beef and pork are not good breakfast meal meats, no. unless you're getting sausage or bacon, but yeah. I'm pretty sure you don't have the luxury of bacon in a prison camp. No. Now, because of the topography and drainage being, drainage being poor, and the area was subject to being extreme heat, you know, yeah, you're on, and, yeah. uh, well cold as well in the winter because yeah. you're on the water yeah and which i can you know attest to that in the summertime it's fucking hot I was say, on the hot water. as balls in the summer yeah 
these extremes made troubles and everything. So these issues exacerbated the problems created by inadequate food, clothing, fuel, housing, and medical care. As a result, approximately 3,000 prisoners died there over 22 months. Damn! Besides having chronic diarrhea, dysteria, dys- dysentery, not dysteria, <laughs> dysentery, and typhoid fever, they had uh, had struck and become an epidemic, while smallpox, scurvy, and the itch, basically crabs, uh, became quite common. Now let me ask you, were any of them killed by Indians or drowned while trying to ford the river? Because the rest of those are just no. fucking Oregon Trail deaths. No. Not as far as I know. I mean, you have you have clinical diarrhea, so that's pretty bad. Yeah, you know that's. So, at this point, the prison was ha- prison had twenty two thousand prisoners, which is twelve thousand more than what it that's, was. That's more than supposed, supposed to, be. to have. Yeah. Uh, and this was by at the end of the the war in eight, April of eighteen sixty five. Uh, now the prisoners were eventually released. In combination of alphabetical order and reverse order of the states that succeeded fr- uh, seceded from the Union. Okay. So basically, well, you know, whoever was the last one se- to secede, well, okay, alphabetical order for there, all the way to South Carolina, because they were the first. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah. so if your last name started with a z and you were to south carolina you're gonna die there so it took from april to june 30th for all the prisoners to be transferred out of the camp um it is known that at least 3584 prisoners died at the prison Jeez. Uh it is estimated that a total of 52,264 prisoners both military and civilian were held prisoner there. So this place is just like up to its tits and ghosts. Yes. Has to be. Although it was designed for 10,000 prisoners, during most of the existence it held between 12,600 to 20,000 inmates. Oh, fuck. Uh, and only five, uh, not five, 50 people escaped successfully. And this can't, this pit place can't be that big. No. They were just cramming a bunch of guys there. Yep. That's fucked. Yeesh. Now, being held, at, uh, being at a hospital in POW camp contributed contributes to the unusual amount of paranormal activity on this particular piece of land. A, there's a ghost of a Confederate soldier can, that can be seen running across the road on any given evening, and there's a there's a voice of an old lighthouse keeper that can be heard singing through the night. Uh, there one of the former wives of one of the uh, lighthouse keepers, mm-hmm. Ann Davis, uh, has been seen wandering around in her blue dress, softly telling people, quote, this is my house. <laughs> the fuck out. But these weren't the only things that happened there. Uh, off the coast of Point Lookout, mm-hmm. in July of 1864, the USS, USS Tulip St. Saint- and there were 47 lives lost as a result of this. Shit. Uh, the gale of 1878 took the lives of 16 people on a ship named the Express. Uh, I guess uh, there was such a heavy waves that it actually capsized the ship. Shit. So it didn't even like run aground. It just fucking yeah. rolled it. Yep. Oof. Uh, the ghost of the second inmate aboard this ship Joseph Henny appears before and during storms, knocking on the lighthouse door. <laughs> no. No. Stay out. Um, we don't need any fucking waterlogged ghosts in here. No. We already have, you know, ghosts that have shit themselves in here. Yes. <laughs> so you keep your salty ass out there where it belongs. So, yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that's my second one. Okay. So let's take a quick break, and we will come back with one of the weirdest things that I've ever researched. Uh, And that's saying something. Mm. So we'll be right back after these messages. I shit my pants, too. (laughs) (laughs) We are back. Believe it or not, we were gone for like 20 minutes. (laughs) 
We had to shuffle vehicles and take dogs out. and They would never have known that. Um, but now they do. Now We're letting them into some behind-the-scenes stuff. So, for my part, we are going to head down to Frederick County, which is in the northern part of the state, up on the Pennsylvania border. The area of Frederick County was settled by German and Dutch uh, settlers, much like most of Pennsylvania, as we know. Because, you know, they've got Pennsylvania Dutch. I don't know if they have Pennsylvania German. I have Pennsylvania Dutch, though. <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> They, they speak German. No shit. I said they have, there's Pennsylvania <laughs> Dutch, but I don't know if there's Pennsylvania German. I don't know. Because Pennsylvania Dutch are those fucking weird, like, Mennonites and shit. Quakers. They make really good, like, baked goods, though. Yeah. You know what, though? Fuck them Amish. You want to know why I can say that? Why? They're never going to hear this. No, probably not. Unless they go on fucking Ramadan or whatever the fuck it is that they do. Rom Springer? There you go. Right church, wrong pew. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, in, as we know from past experiences, we know that when people move from one area to another, they bring their stories with them. And sometimes they come across things <coughs> that have been there for generations before they arrived. Mm -hmm. And then they have to find an explanation for it. German immigrants were very superstitious um, in general, but more so when they arrived here in a different land. So they would start doing things such as painting hexes on their barns to ward off uh, evil spirits. It would kind of like help protect their livestock, the family, the farm. They did the same thing in Germany, but it seems like it picked up a little bit when they got here to a different country that they're not familiar with. Of course. So the Germans are also responsible for the term poltergeist, which means either loud, go uh, loud ghost or noisy spirit, depending on kind of what area you're from, you know. It's German. Right. So. <clears throat> They also came across a creature here, and it's not exclusive to Maryland, but there's been a lot of sightings there. Yes. That they named the Schnellergeist, which means... Yes, which means quick spirit in German. Um, or the more common term that you just mentioned, Snallygaster, which also sounds like a really, really strange Appalachian like slang term for a vagina. But, you know... <laughs> So sightings of this beast range back to the 1700s when the German folks first showed up, and they described it like this. It's a chimera-type critter, being half bird, half reptile, with metallic claws and a metallic beak. Some of the witness drawings from more recent sightings detail a completely different thing, this being a kind of a heavier set, slick-skinned creature with eagle wings, a single eye in the middle of its forehead, a bird-like beak that actually almost looks like a duck's bill in a lot of the, the drawings, with tentacle-like appendages protruding from the beak. Hmm. Which is fucking wild. That's like some H.P. Lovecraft shit, and I don't really know how to feel about it. You know, is it a, is it a fucking bird lizard, or is it an elder god? Make up your minds. So for years, the Snallygaster lived only on the pages of folklore until 1909 when stories of the beast began to appear in newspapers. Encounters between local residents and the winged creature in, uh, in February and March of 1909 described it having, quote, enormous wings, a long pointed bill, claws like steel hooks, and an eye in the center of its forehead. So I'm three paragraphs into this, and we have three different descriptions of the same fucking thing. Yes. <clears throat> Further, it was said to make screeches, quote, like a locomotive whistle. Woo! 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 Come on, ride the train. And anyway. ride it. <laughs> a, February 190, uh, a February 1909 article detailed a man having claimed to have been snatched by the, uh, by the winged creature. It allegedly stuck its teeth into his neck, causing heavy bleeding before dropping him from a height onto a hillside. So it bit him in the neck and then just fucking tossed him from, like, up in the air. It sounds to me like this guy got drunk, fell out of a tree, and landed on some shit. And, or he was drunk and imagined the whole thing. Not real sure. Um, all the above? <laughs> the story... Uh, 
the story was car- uh, was carried in the Valley Register and soon made its way to Washington, where the goddamn Smithsonian Institute offered a reward for the hide, and U.S. President Teddy Roosevelt reportedly considered postponing an international trip to head to the hills and go hunting. If anybody would have caught this thing, it would have been Teddy Roosevelt. He killed Bigfoot. Exactly. So he could have done this too. He'd have made this thing his bitch. (laughs) I don't deny it. I don't think he can. You know. In New Jersey, it was reported that footprints were discovered in the snow. It was also reported that a woman was nearly plucked up by a large flying beast near the town of uh, Sharpsburg, which I believe is in Virginia. Mm -hmm. And a farmer in the area, near where the woman was almost picked up, spooked off a large flying creature and then checked his barn and found quote an egg the size of a barrel after it after it flown off in maryland it was first sighted by a black man who operated a brick burning kiln near cumberland uh he spotted it near the kiln sleeping and when he woke it up it emitted a blood curdling scream and angrily flew away it was also then shortly after spotted in Hagerstown, which I believe is also in Maryland. Uh-huh. I'm sure there's a Hagerstown elsewhere, but, you know. I only um, know of one. And that was that's south of Middletown at Lover's Leap. And uh, and they'd seen it flying over the mountains between Gapland and Burkittsville, where the general area of where Mal Dyer would have been. Uh, and well, her Blair Witch shit. but it was. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, no, <clears throat> that's where the Blair Witch project took place but not where what semantics mall dyer was down in leonardtown which yeah is how far in... is that from burkittsville probably a ways maryland doctor tell me it's probably a ways i don't really know where burkittsville i think it's probably up that's way up north well i don't fucking know and leonardtown's down south i've been to maryland for like 45 minutes i couldn't tell you <laughs> compared to you i mean i, I spent a day there <laughs> hey, so sorry, man um but also, it was reported to have laid another large egg near Burkittsville. The last sighting of Frederick County occurred in March 1909, when three men fought the creature outside of a railroad station for nearly a half an hour. Uh, for I'm sorry, for nearly an hour and a half before chasing it into the woods of Carroll County. So just three drunk dudes out there with like fucking shovels and stuff, wailing on this giant bird freak thing. Afterwards, there are no more sightings of the mysterious creature for the next 23 years. At which point, uh, at which time, it was once again spotted in Frederick County. The first report said the quote bird was seen just below South Mountain in Washington County. It's surmised at the time that as the uh, that the life expectancy of a snallygaster was estimated to be about 20 years. The new sightings were from the offspring of the 1909 creature. So one of those two eggs that nobody decided to make a giant omelet out of. Mm. That probably would have tasted like shit, though. Because the bigger eggs are, the worse the omelets are. It's like duck eggs are terrible. The only thing they're good for is bacon. I'll probably get some hate from that, but I don't care. Yeah. (laughs) Just when you thought this shit couldn't get any weirder, it goes and gets a little bit weirder. Okay. Not only is there a flying what the fuck, but it also has a land-bound mortal enemy in the form of the Dewayo. Okay. Which is a werewolf type creature that's been spotted in the area as well. Um, it's been spotted in the area as well. And there are old stories of it fighting the Snallygaster when it lands to eat. <laughs> Some werewolf in the woods just, Land, you son of a bitch! Come down here, you pussy! <laughs> I'm gonna fight your ass! If I can fly, I'd come up there and kick you in the dick. <laughs> or cloaca. I'll kick, I'll kick you in your egg tube. <laughs> you land, I'm gonna beat the fuck yeah, out of you. I'm gonna fuck you up. Then I might fuck you. I mean, what? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I get hard when I fight. <laughs> the first mention of the of the Dewayo comes from a sighting in 1944 in West Middleton, uh, which is in Frederick County. Witnesses heard the que- the queecher. The queecher. Queecher. Huh? Queecher. Marriage. Witnesses heard the creature make, quote, frightful screams, and there were footprints uh, to coincide with the sightings. Which, from the description, they sound like elongated dog tracks, which to me sounds like Mm -hmm. dog man. Or potentially a werewolf in this case, because it has to be just that much fucking stranger. The tail did not come to a... uh, 
These tales did not come to prominence until a newspaper account in the Frederick News Post on November 27th, 1965. Um, when that story was published, it detailed an account of the creature. Quote, Near the woods of Gramble State Park, John Becker went out into his backyard to investigate a strange noise. <coughs> it was getting dark, and he had started back to his house when he saw something moving towards him. It was as big as a bear, had long black hair, a bushy tail, and growled like a wolf or a dog in anger. As it got closer, it stood up on its hind legs and attacked him. Becker fought off the creature until it ran back into the woods, leaving him, his wife, and children horrified. Deciding to, er uh, deciding to remain anonymous under the alias John Becker, which I'd put money on it, is this guy's fucking actual name. And the newspaper's like, oh, we fucked up. We should probably put that as an alias so that his co-workers don't think he's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so he filed a report with local state police telling of an attack by a mysterious monster that he called a DeWayo. In the summer of 1966, the creature was again sighted on the outskirts of Gramble State Park when a man only referred to by Jim A., which, very creative, well done, encountered the DeWayo as he was headed towards a campsite. He described it as a shaggy, two-legged animal the size of a deer that had a triangle-shaped head with pointed ears and a chin. Sounds vaguely wolf-like or German Shepherd-like, you know, uh -huh. that, that kind of head. It was dark brown in color, and when, it appro uh, and when approached, it made a horrid scream and backed away from the man. Jim went on to say that the creature had an odd walk as it retreated. Its legs, quote, stuck out from the side of the trunk of the body, making its, movement, making its movements appear almost spider-like as it backed away. So that's kind of fucking crazy. That's weird to me. Yeah. To have the legs, like, way out far like that, that would it, it kind of make you think the upper arm bones are going to be really long. And have like a weird joint, like our elbows, where you can kind of bend them basically in any different direction. And yeah. just kind of fucking... And, ugh, creepy. Uh, what gets even more interesting is that these sightings of the DeWayo almost, almost, almost coincide with the times of the German settlements. The Germans also have stories of a creature that they refer to as the Hexenwolf, which is a person that can shapeshift... shapeshift into a werewolf. So if you remember back to our werewolf and dogman episode where we mentioned the uh, Benedanti werewolves, the beneficial the werewolves of God, yep. almost makes me think that's kind of where a hex and wolf would fall, where it's a, a person that has the ability to shapeshift, but they're going to use that power for good instead of assholery. <laughs> So that is the Snallygaster and DeWayo adjacent. <laughs> and DeWayo adjacent. Yeah. You can't have one without the other. <clears throat> true. Very true. I mean, why would you? So what else you got? Because I know you have, you said you got one more. One more. Yeah. yeah. So I said uh, all these are places that I've uh, either been to or or by where my family lives. Yeah. The last one is I've actually been to. I've actually set foot on the property. Never actually been into the place, but uh, it's called it's the Sodderly Plantation, which was built along the Patuxent River back in the 18th century, and is currently the oldest surviving plantation in Southern Maryland. While it was a private residence for a number of wealthy families throughout the years, it is now a public space. Okay, so it's like a yep. Like, they do, like, reenactments and stuff there. Uh, not not necessarily reenactments, but it's, like, one of those historical places yeah, where kinda. people, like, cruising around in period costumes and doing no, shit the way that they would have done it. No, they, like, use it for diff different functions. Oh, okay. Um, you know, in, in, in a historical type. Okay. Atmosphere, too. Uh, staff and visitors have all reported strange happenings on the grounds. Lights flickering on and off. Strange noises can be heard throughout the house. And there's also been known to have a breakfast smell waft up from the kitchen when no one is cooking. Oh, best haunting ever. I know. <laughs> you wake <laughs> up to coffee and bacon smell every morning. But that could also be disappointing because there's no coffee or bacon. True. 
what would kill me is if I smelled waffles first thing in the Ooh. morning and I got down there and there's no waffles. I know. I'd kill you. It'd break my fucking heart. I'm, I'm telling so- you. I'm sorry, little guy. Well, one of the most menacing ghosts that live on the plantation is a former owner who still haunts the grounds. His spirit is notorious for throwing people he doesn't like down the staircase. Dickhead. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, and uh, I actually didn't find a whole hell of a lot on Sodderly, like who built it, you know, who the original owners were. One of your ancestors, <clears throat> I assume. No. No, no. <laughs> no. Uh, and uh, so I didn't really, like, know – didn't get to find out too much. I even went to like their website, and there was no like, like real major historical like information on it. Like uh, most places, that, that kind of makes sense because it's one of those places that I'm sure has a less than savory background, let's say, and they don't really want to publicize the fact that you know, yeah, oh, yeah, we owned people here, you know. Oh, no, they, it's a plantation. I mean, they, they you know they have a. Um, they have a, uh, a slave quarter still there. Last time I went there and, uh, I actually got to go inside of it and it was kind of small, to, you know, doorway to get in. Oh, no doubt. And, uh. They weren't designed to be comfortable. <laughs> and, um, my brother and I, kind of funny, we're, uh, we're outside <laughs> walking around and, uh, he had his camcorder and he, uh, happened to look over across the way into the field and so it happens that you know there's somebody uh <laughs> you know d- uh <laughs> bailing hay and uh my brother makes the comment of well this is kind of interesting times have changed <laughs> times have changed look who's doing the work now <laughs> basically like get out there white boy <laughs> yeah i was like oh poor bastards that's but, funny though i thought it was funny but yeah, so that's uh, that's Maryland. That's Maryland, and uh, so yeah. With that said, before we get out of here, we have something else we have to do. Well, let's let's do that at the end. What else do we have to do though? Well, let's cover. Let's get our. Well, our... why don't we do this before the ads? <clears throat> All right, fine. Yeah. So something if you, if... you guys seen on the Facebook? Page. Yes, you've seen on our Facebook and our Instagram and or if somehow you... Twitter. But if you <clears throat> haven't seen it, it this is. It... This is the cube. Yes, it is the cube. And this is like the capital letters, the cube. And this is to keep, I'm not going to say keep shit interesting, but it's to keep us on our toes. So the way this is going to work. No, it's going to keep the things interesting. Both. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to pass this off to Kevin. He's going to roll the cube. And whatever topic it lands on is what I cover next week. And then I will roll the cube and we will see what Kevin's going to cover the week after. So I'm going to pass it off to him, and he will tell you what the... Whoops. Holy shit, I couldn't have done that again if I tried. Hoink. <laughs> okay. Mario lemued that bitch right <laughs> off the fucking goalpost. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the best sound in sports. Uh, so the first thing is history, then cult, cryptid, paranormal, crime... Badass, and that's, that's all it. six of them. That's all six. <laughs> okay, so roll for me. See what I get. Badass. Fuck yes. Oh, I've got a couple in mind already. <sighs> do we go World War One, just like unkillable motherfucker, or do we do some cowboy shit? Cowboy shit. Cowboy shit. It is. That's what I was thinking. And Kevin. Oh boy, buddy, you get crime. I love crime. That's going to be interesting. See what you can cover. What you can come <clears throat> up with here. You see, you couldn't could... have done that shit again if I tried. <laughs> yes. So for you, those of for you not second with us, time, he's the... he's done something that you know that you couldn't do again if he tried. When I tossed the cube to Kevin originally, he hit my mic. I fucking Mario Lemieux that shit right off the goalpost <laughs> at the back of his microphone, and then it just shot out of my hand and landed in a pretzel bucket. <laughs> Literally, like son of a bitch. Within, and it was like a good, I don't know three feet away yeah, from him. Yeah, and I wasn't even looking. It just fucking <clears throat> shot out of my hand. It was like... He was just holding it, you know, holding it... You it know, was compelled to, to go to the pretzels. It, <laughs> it slipped right out. So, so, yeah. We got a badass, and then we got crime. Yep, badass crime. But the good thing with crime 
it's it's a very vague topic. So you could do like a bank robbery, a serial killer, fucking a kidnapping, a terrorist event. You could do all kinds of shit. I have one. I have a. I have a topic that I'm gonna, in mind. I'm gonna try to find something on it, but we'll see. And I know who I'm gonna do. And for the first time that we've covered a badass, it might also be a bad guy. <laughs> well, that's good. So it'll be interesting. Okay. So I'm excited for next week. Well, speaking of interesting, uh, head on over to studio.com. Check them out. They have uh, earbuds, headphones, Bluetooth speakers, all that. And find what you want, put it in your basket, and put the promo code of DarkWindows15 in to get 15% off your entire purchase. God damn right. Also, you can go over to ageofradio.org. Find your next favorite podcast. We've got something for everybody. We've got whatever the hell we do. We've got true crime. We've got all kinds of assorted nerdery, including some comic book stuff, beer nerd stuff, movie stuff, motivational stuff. If you want to be motivated, which, you know. You'll find it. Uh, I'm not. I'm not usually one to be motivated or inspired. Don't try to inspire me. I just want to, you know, just take a li- take a yeah. gander. What what's on there? Take a listen because you can listen right on the thing, and then but also download the show. Uh, it helps but yeah, us well, yeah. Then a go lot. then go and download it on uh, whatever favorite podcast you you know download on. Because why do you want to keep going to a website to always you know listen to it when you yeah. can just you know just get it right off of there. Yeah. Uh, you know, a podcast. And, run then... over, and while you're at it, run over to Spotify or Apple Podcast or iTunes or whatever the fuck they call it this week and leave us a review. It's super helpful. Yeah. And we like to hear what you guys think. Yeah. Uh, also, you can <clears throat> hit us up on Twitter or Instagram at Dark Windows Pod. Uh, we're also on Facebook at Dark Windows Podcast. Yes. <clears throat> and <clears throat> if you want to email us, you can a- email us at darkwindowspod at gmail.com. You can also go to dwpmerch at gmail.com. <clears throat> d-w-p-m-e-r-c-h at gmail.com and buy one of our badass t-shirts or stickers. Um, our designs are up on all the social media. The homemade stuff, those shirts are $22. The ones that uh, one of our buddies over on Instagram designed for us, the... Uh, <laughs> Lizard Man Unabomber and the Varg Black Metal shirts, those are going to be $25. Just no because matter. it does take my wife a little bit longer to make those ones because they're more detailed. And no matter what your size is, even if you're a fat tummy. We're charging you extra for a small, though. Fuck you, skinny fucks. Yeah. No, nah, I won't do that. And you don't even pay for shipping. So just yeah, buy a t-shirt. Stickers are 3 bucks. Just whatever ones you want. Stickers are 3 bucks, But grab a t-shirt. They're awesome. Yeah. They're all homemade in-house at Fortress DWP. Yo. Yeah. So and uh yeah, also uh you I mean I'm on Facebook. I'm Kevin Heyer and he's Kev Carlton. Yep. On my Facebook. backup primary account. Yes. <laughs> cuz I done got banned and then I done lost my profile cuz I'm pretty sure some Nigerian guy stole it, I'm assuming. Probably. That's usually how that works. And I'm probably trying to scam some old lady out of money. Ooh. Which sucks cuz I'm not even going to see any of it. <laughs> Asshole. Poor, poor guy. Anyway, yeah, and uh, Merry Christmas to have, everyone. Have yourself a Merry Little Christmas. You know, because by the time you hear this, maybe, possibly, it's going to be Christmas. Oh, it'll or, be, you'll get this on Christmas Eve. Or, you know, yeah, Christmas Eve, yeah. Christmas, whatever. Whatever you're going to listen to it. It's either after Christmas, before Christmas, or Christmas Day. Happy belated Hanukkah, Jews. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and whatever the fuck Kwanzaa is, happy if you celebrate that, cool. Sure. Congrats. Yeah. And uh, I guess until next week. Just because you can't see out into the dark doesn't mean that the dark can't see into you. Woohoo! Goodbye. <laughs>